Hey guys, I want to take you out and show you what I what I built. This is uh, this is my first time ever building uh, a gun. Really, um, put together well, sort of put together an AR. My wife kind of built it for me or had it built for me. But uh, just got done with what I call my first real long range shooter. But we've got to go back to uh, got to go back to the shed here, um, which is where it's at. So, Okay, so this is uh, this is my uh, latest project. Um, this is the 6506 or 6506 A square. Just finished it up not too long ago, and I'm gonna take some time to, to talk to you about it. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming and checking this out. I um, wanted to share a little bit of a background on why I decided to build uh, this particular gun. I call it my first long range shooter. Uh, it, it does shoot long range. I'm expecting it to, uh, but I wanted to explain why I chose this particular, uh, this particular caliber and this particular setup. Uh, I've never done this before. I'm a complete amateur. I'm not an amateur hunter. I've hunted my whole life. I have several uh, other hunting rifles. I've, I've always been kind of a 270 shooter. I've got a, a Savage 270 as well as a Ruger Model 77 uh, uh, 270. However, I spend more of my time archery hunting and bow hunting. But I do like to get out and rifle hunt, and especially with my kids, typically they'll draw a, a rifle tag. And, and so I like to get out with them. But the frustration for me was that last year during the late elk hunt, the late cow elk hunt, um, I, I took an elk the first day at about three, 350 yards, and I felt comfortable doing that with my 270. But uh, from then on, we really never saw an elk within probably six to 800 yards. And that was really tough. It was, it was frustrating. I think it was frustrating for my, my young son a little bit. And I wanted to have him have an opportunity to be able to shoot um, something. It was his first year, but the frustration was just really being able to get close enough and get a, a decent shot. Um, and so I just personally decided that I wanted to have a gun that I knew could reach out a little bit further. Uh, I, I don't, I don't expect to take an animal at uh, you know a thousand yards, probably not even eight hundred. But I would like to be able to take an animal if, if I felt like I had put in the time and the practice and the skill set to go out and do that. And so I felt like if I could shoot one or shoot comfortably at six to 700, six to 750, I'd be really ecstatic about that. And, and I wanted to know that it was gonna hit where I obviously was aiming. So I decided over the last year that I wanted to put together this, this gun. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to build. I started with the, uh, the kind of the, the, um, the, the 300 Win Mag, 300 Short Mag. I have a friend that really likes those. I looked at the 7mm, and then there's a lot of people nowadays using, doing the 6.5 Creedmoor, and I, I knew that that round would reach out. I started doing a little bit of research on that, but I went to a friend and I asked him what he thought I should do, and he and another gentleman in my neighborhood had just... Uh, decided to build a 6506 A square, and I guess they kind of talked me into it. And I, I guess the, the the appeal to me was that I could load into some of the brass I already had. Essentially, the 6506, excuse me, A square is uh, is a long action because we can load into a 25 out six, a 270 or a 30 out six brass, and uh, and so. It kind of, I felt like it would give me an opportunity to play a little bit more with my powders uh, and work those out a little bit better. I, I had talked to another friend who does a lot of long range shooting and he kind of felt like if you wanted to be in the 140 grain category of, of bullet, that the 2,900 feet per second was kind of the sweet spot. But as I looked at most people that were shooting the 6.5, they were averaging around 2,600, maybe 27. And, it didn't seem like a lot were really getting up into the 2900 and I didn't know if that was even possible. But I felt like with, with a little bit longer cartridge that maybe we could play with that a little bit more. And um, so that's one of the reasons I decided to do it. Now, I, I will just say that I am not a um, professional by any means. I'm as amateur as they come when it comes to uh, long range shooting, to precision shooting. Um, and I'm sure there's there's better guns and I'm sure there's better choices this is what I chose, and uh, and I'm, I'm I'm happy with it so far. I'm excited about it, and I hope it works out and does exactly what I hope it does um, for for what I was going for. You can see on this one here. I'm going to go ahead and open this. 
the Browning has about a 60 degree bolt throw. What's awesome about that is it basically comes up horizontal here to your action. That's as high as it goes. Um, most of my other guns, the, the, the bolt on it goes all the way up to the scope. When you're actually charging or loading around, it's not uncommon for that bolt or your finger, at least, to hit the scope. And, um, and it just causes a lot of interference. So I have a friend that's really a big Browning fan, and he kind of got me started on this. Uh, he built his 6506 with a Tika T3, which has another great action. I think it's got about a 70 degree bolt throw on it. Um, but I didn't want to have to um, to deal with, with a bolt on on this other than that and I, I just really like the browning action it's smooth it's solid and so what i did is i actually went to a local pawn shop and um and i found a browning a bolt 30-06 and i got a great deal on it i picked it up for uh, about 450 dollars and uh and i i thought that was a great deal because when i shopped online it seemed like they were more like in the 700 to 750 dollar range so it was in great condition and I bought the Brown, the Browning A Bolt 30-06 with the entire purpose of only using the action. In fact, over here I've got uh, I've got the box of A box with uh, with the old stock in it. That's the old stock. I've got the old barrel, and uh, so that's the that's that's what I went with. So that that's what got me started. And then I needed to um, I needed to uh, come up with a stock. And a friend of mine uh, kind of turned me on to these Boyd's stocks. Um, this is kind of, if you if you don't know Boyd's, once again, I'm not being paid by Boyd's, um, but uh, I was really happy with with their uh, with their stocks. Um, and this one was the the Browning or not the Browning, the uh, Boyd's at one thumb hole, and a little more tactical look. I wanted a little more tactical look. I wanted to be able to adjust the uh the the butt of the stock down here have a little bit of a chin rest adjustment as you can see that kind of goes up and down um and, and it's kind of nice and um i just liked the color of it this is kind of their camouflage pattern if you will and um and it comes with uh several eyelets it comes with uh, one in the back two in the front um that allow you to to have your shoulder um strap as well as as mount a bipod right out the gate. I didn't have to install it. I was able to just uh, mount it right away. Um, now, as far as the barrel goes, once I had the uh, the gun, the 30-06 Browning A bolt and the stock from Boyd's, I uh, I went ahead and took it over to my gunsmith, who is a is a local to my area um, by the name of Ben Pratt. I'm going to put in a plug for Ben. Ben uh, does just awesome work. Uh, self-taught gunsmith and he does amazing work in fact I, I've had him do two other muzzle brakes for me on my 270s and I love them in fact I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit and come closer so you can see here is the muzzle brake this is his own design in fact as I get closer it is almost impossible to see where that muzzle brake actually threads and or threads off of there but if if you were able you would see a small line in there I mean, and it is almost impossible to see with even the naked eye where that separates, but it does. And he does such an amazing job on those muzzle brakes. And, um, and I knew I wanted to have one on this, uh, on this build. Lastly, you'll probably see on the last thing is the scope that I chose. This is a big scope. I know it's bulky. It's actually got the, uh, the, the sun shade, um, on it, so it makes it even look a little bit bulkier. This is the Burris Eliminator 3. Uh, I chose the Burris Eliminator 3 because honestly, maybe I'm lazy. Maybe that's what it came down to. I started researching this scope um, and I loved the idea that I could push a button and it would automatically have a range that would appear. It would laser range find the, the target and then it would automatically compute my holdover, and that coupled with the BC, that coupled with the uh, the velocity, and it would take all those numbers and it would pull up a red dot, which would be essentially my my aiming point or my holdover. It's awesome. It's fast. It's quick. It's accurate. I push the button. It ranges it. I push it again. It has a little red dot appear. That's my holdover. That's what I put on the target. Pull the trigger. And